Okay, this is a wonderful effect that you'll be able to do right away once I've shown it to you. Okay, so you need the Jack of Diamonds. That will be our helper card. And then as you can see, I have the cards well mixed, numbered cards with face cards and suits and colors and so forth. So I'll go ahead and gather these up. Now we're, we need the Jack, so I'm going to put them up in the upper left-hand corner there. Uh, now, since we saw the cards, uh, why don't we have you tell me when to stop thumb riffling down the deck and we'll discard the, the top portion of the deck, okay? So, I'll go ahead and start. Tell me when to stop. Stop there. Okay. Threw away about a quarter of the deck or a third or something. Okay. And so, we've arrived at a random location decided by you. So this is actually going to be your special card. I'm going to set it right down next to the Jack of Diamonds, okay? Now, we actually need an even number of cards uh, for this effect because we'll be dealing out cards into two piles a little bit later, okay? So what I'll do is I'll push off pairs until you tell me to stop, okay? And, and those will be the cards that we'll work with, okay? So just tell me when to stop. Up there. Okay, very good. We'll discard the others. Okay, so we're very much at a random location actually within the deck. We've discarded portion of the top and the bottom actually. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these cards that you've chosen. I'm going to set them on top of your special card here and then pick up all of those cards. Now I'm going to show you the identity of the bottom card. Now I'll turn away so I don't see it. But you need to remember that card, whatever that is. Okay, you got it? And now um, it's important that we show it to the Jack of Diamonds as well, because he's going to help us find it in just a moment or two. Okay, so Jack, you got it? Okay, he said he did. Okay, very good. So now what we need to do is we're going to use the first, middle, and last name of Jack Diamonds to randomize the cards. Okay, since your card is currently at the bottom, right? It's kind of in a dangerous place, easy to spot, right? Um, so would you like me to spell out Jack's first name, middle name, or last name, or all three? All three to begin with, okay? So J-A-C-K-O-F-D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S, Jack of Diamonds. Okay, what about now? Just his first name. J-A-C-K. Now, what? Last name, okay? D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. His first name again, that's fine. J-A-C-K. His middle name now, okay. O-F, okay? Any more spelling of his first, middle, or last name? You want his first name spelt yet again, okay. <laughs> J-A-C-K. Okay, so if you're content with the mixing of the cards, we'll move on to dealing them out into two piles, okay? So I'm going to go left, right, left, right, just like this, into two piles. Okay, now Jack's going to help us find your card. Okay, your card. Okay, um, so why don't we look in this packet first. I'll go ahead and just spread these out here, okay? And so I'm gonna have a Jack help me here. So I'm gonna show the cards to Jack, and then he's going to whisper in my ear whether he sees the card. Okay, so I'm gonna hold him up to my ear here. He says no, he does not see your card among these. Okay, well, we'll... I, he's supposed to be truthful, so we'll go with what he says. Okay, now let's check the other pile. It better be in here. <laughs> Otherwise, somebody has a bad memory or is making up stories. Okay, so Jack, do you see the card in here now? You do? I saw a little head nod. Okay. Well, can you tell me what it is? Okay, so I'm going to hold him up to my ear and he's going to whisper to me what it is. He says your card is a three. It's red. 
It's a three of diamonds, the same suit as he has. Is that true? And I'm hoping it's true. <laughs> we'll find out after the recording. Uh, but this right here should be your card. Okay. Now, how did we do that? Well, let me just show you the packets here really fast. So Jack's over here. He's our helper. That's great. Uh, let me just show you these two packets. You remember how we did left, right, left, right? Is there anything kind of interesting about the cards that make up both of these packets that you can spot? And it, it may take a little bit of detective work. And if you want a hint, um, focus on the number of letters in the first name of each of these cards. Well, eight has five, 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 a three, and three letters. What about over here? Uh, see, King, K-I-N-G, that's four. Uh, five has four letters in its name. A little confusing. So four, 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 mm, five, four, 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 four. Okay. Well, that is the secret. Their card is going to stand out like a sore thumb. So Jack of Diamonds will be able to easily identify their card even if he had kind of forgotten what it was okay so just go back in time and think through okay how was the deck set up so if you go back to where i had a ribbon spread on the table i sh i freely showed it to you and the fact is the the organization of this deck is such that you could leave it out in the open for probably weeks and nobody's going to detect anything about structure there. But all I had was, I had the cards alternating either an even number of letters in their names, like Jack, J-A-C-K, There's we're, we're talking about just the first name of each card, and an odd number of letters, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, all the way through. Now, it ends up that you can create a packet of 40 cards doing that okay and so if you go back in time so, so just imagine that here in fact I think these are the the halves here but this was inside here right came from the middle so since the top 40 have that alternating structure um, it's only the bottom 12 that don't okay so you can you can certainly cut off about a quarter of the deck discard and then you could cut off about a quarter of the bottom of the deck and discard as well if you would like right you could do that um, though i i don't believe i chose to do that all i did was after i discarded the cards decided by the spectator with my thumb riffle i set down the next card okay let's go back in time i set down the next card next to the jack okay and then from here you just need to remember to push off don't deal push off and even number of cards. It doesn't matter how many cards, as long as it's even, an even number of cards. Okay, so you just push off an even number of cards. These get set on top of the spectator's special card. Now, of course, now there's an odd number of cards. Okay, so what's going to happen is this is going to alternate between an even number of letters and an odd number of letters in the card names all the way through, except for the bottom two. These will either be card names that both of them have an even number of letters in them or an odd number of letters in them. So what that does is it puts their card out of sync with the alternating pattern, okay? And so what that means then is when you go to deal these left, right, left, right, their card is going to be the only one in the packet. And it's packet there. You know, we don't have to deal out all of them, but the only one in the packet in which it now resides that will have opposite parity for the number of letters in its name. Just as we saw, three of diamonds, three has five letters. All of the other cards around it had four letters. So it's going to be immediately clear to you oh, which card must have been the spectator's card. And of course, I've just used the jack of diamonds 
as a helper card that will whisper the truth to us. But there's one other important thing about the Jack of Diamonds and why I chose it. Jack has four letters in it. Of has two letters in it. Diamonds has eight. Okay, that's very important. <laughs> this won't work. This will only work. So once we've Let's go back in time. Let's say we just constructed the packet with their card at the bottom. Okay. Now we're going to go into spelling Jack of Diamonds or one or more of those portions of his name, right? The key is because of this structure alternating, except for the bottom card, that one's out of sync. If you coat or count out an even number of cards, and drop the rest on top, it will not upset that relationship, okay? So we're free to deal out uh, two cards, four cards, six, eight, whatever, any even number, as many times as you like, drop the rest on top, and what will happen, if you're sure to deal out just an even number for those dealings, when you go to deal left, right, left, right, the packet on your left will have one more card than the other, just like that. This will be where their card is, by the way. It's in the larger of the two packets. This is smaller by one. And so what I did was I just spread these out, had the joke, had the jack, sorry, excuse me, had the jack confirm that no, it's not there. It's not among those. I know it's here. Okay, and then you spread out these and their card is going to just stand out, right? It's going to be the only one that has a different card name parody. Parody just refers to even or odd than the others, okay? And so then you can pretend that Jack tells you, you just raise it to your ear and pretend that he's whispering the answer to you, okay? So that is how it works. And so the Jack of Diamonds um, is important for more than just one use. I was wanting a card that has a first, middle, and last name with an even number of letters. And there's others as well, obviously. But I decided to hold up the Jack of Diamonds as the truth teller. He'll tell you what he saw. He'll reveal the spectator's card. Okay, so there's a lot of ways that you could modify this now. Um, you could have the cards alternate in a different way than like maybe evens and odds, like even and odd values. Uh, the danger there, I think it would be pretty obvious if this is like an even valued card, odd, even, odd, even, you know, throughout. So I think to hide it, doing something like I did where you look at the number of letters and the names of the cards as your way of dividing them into two separate groups for this alternating structure, it's a good way to go because as I did at the beginning of the effect, I can show the cards and you can look at that for a very long time and I don't think anyone's going to see anything there. Okay, anyway, that's the effect. Uh, it's a fun one. Uh, so if you just go through and follow those steps, and of course you have the advantage now that you can go back and see exactly what the structure was of that initial organization of the deck, and you'll see that it's what I said it is. And so if you wanna come up with a different way to organize it, that's great. Then if you follow all of the other steps, this will work for you every time. Okay, so thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.